Hello, it is Tuesday, the 20th of October. I am here with the incomparable, the amazing Michael Harding and his cohort in finance, uh, the incomparable and equally amazing Michael Elrith, um, doing their usual update on finance as well as Kirk County real estate. Uh, first, I'll start off. It's been in a kind of a tough week in the market. Uh, we're actually doing this before the market closed on Friday, uh, but so far for the week, if we were to close right now, um, the Dow would be off 1.42%, the S&P off 2.15%, and the NASDAQ off 2.92%. Uh, so it's a case of where cash is king. Uh, driving the market, of course, uh, three things. Uh, the uh, situation in the Middle East, everybody's waiting on uh, Israel to attack Hamas and start their land invasion. Uh the disorganization in Congress uh, just found out that uh, Jim Jordan failed his third vote uh, for Speaker of the House, and um, the he failed a um, um, silent vote or uh, you know a, a uh, anonymous vote uh, by like 125 votes. So they're going to have a beauty contest on Monday and uh, find out who's going to who's going to get it. Hopefully next week. And then, of course, the third thing is still concerns about interest rates. Um, Powell and his uh, Fed minions uh, at a couple of conferences yesterday. Uh, some said, hey, uh, we're, you know, we think we're almost done. Uh, and of course, Powell said higher for longer. Uh, so rate fears are ripping through the market right now. But uh, so, you know, keep building lots of cash. Keep, uh, you know, bonds. Bonds aren't working if rates are going up and stocks aren't working either. Uh, in fact, uh, kind of the big news this week that came out, a couple of studies said, Wall Street Journal, the 60-40 portfolio, 60% stocks and 40% bonds has been, you know, the, the institutional allocation has been kind of a disaster for investors. So on happy that happy note, uh, who wants to start off? Who's got some good news to share with our viewers? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got some good news, Bill. We can use short-term notes and CDs and money market accounts to gain some traction, go forward, you know, four and a half to five and a half percent. And so that's uh, kind of a risk off uh, opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, if, you're, if you're making that yeah. in a year instead of losing that in a day, that's probably a net positive. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> sure is. Hey, I ran into something um in my reading has to do with housing. So segue part of this into uh, Michael's uh, discussion about, about housing. But first, let me tell you an article that was published uh, in the Epic Times, uh, and, uh, and it came from the Daily Caller as the source. The uh, Department of uh, Justice charged a Chinese national whose illegal California-based Biolab uh, was accused of distributing misbranded medical devices. And this lab was a, uh, also is accused of possessing more than 20 infect infectious agents, such as uh, HIV and malaria, and uh, genetically engineering mice to carry COVID-19. Um, and I'm going to mention the associated company names that were in the article, and um, I'm, I'm urging those in my circle to avoid using um, any of the testing devices that were uh, distributed by uh, Universal Meditech, Inc. and Prestige Biotech, Inc. When we hear more about this case, of course, it'll probably drag on for a while. I'll try to give an update. Um, and uh, we'll hope that we can uh, not see spreading of infect infectious agents such as HIV and COVID-19 uh, coming out of this California lab. Now what, back to the, um, yeah. Was that, was that the one down in Sacramento got raided about two months ago? Um, this one was in... Um, wasn't Sacramento, Bill. Um, For Vallejo, excuse me, I believe. And, and it wasn't in Vallejo. Um, and, you know, I, I cut that out of my report. It was in the article. 
Okay. And uh, I can all set, I'll try to circle back to that uh, while Michael's doing his presentation. Well, Mike, before um, you go any further, uh, could you give those mm -hmm. two names again, please? Yes, uh, Universal Meditech Inc., which is actually defunct, but if there's um, if there's a, a test medical testing um, devices, um, including you know what you could do for home testing, um, they would be uh, they might be uh, printed on the, on a box or a package. Uh, apparently, Universal Meditech Inc. is defunct. But the next generation of incorporation was Prestige Biotech Incorporated. So, Michael, in my reading this week, I I found a, a stat that uh, typically first-time home buyers purchase thirty to forty percent of homes being purchased. As of the end of September, the month-end rate of purchase for first-timers was 27%. So I did a little uh, hypothetical calculation here, assuming that on average, 34% of home purchasers were first timers. Then in that example, we would say that first time purchases are, are down by about 20% in the broad marketplace. That's about right. So we know that correlates with uh, prices and interest rates, right? Well, that and and down payment. Oh, okay, and that's another thing that that I w read about. Uh, there's a fairly high number of cash purchases, and that isn't what most first timers are able to do. So that's a kind of that's a brief summary of that report. I thought it was interesting that uh, first time purchasers are down by about 20%. I saw in your report, though, that prices in Clark County are firm. Yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, well, to add to that, Mike and Bill, um, I came across something. Uh, if This is an if scenario. Uh, if the mortgage rates were at 3%, 50 million household could qualify for a $400,000 mortgage. But at the current rate of 7%, only 27 million uh, households qualify for a $400,000 mortgage. And at 8%, which is where we seem to be treading up towards, 22 million households qualify for a $400,000 mortgage. And so that that feeds into what you were talking about, Mike, about the, the, the drop in uh, first-time homebuyers because... Um, you know, uh, if you have a, if you have a home right now and you held onto it for some time and you sell it, you have some built-in equity growth, either from paying down the principal or just the natural realization of, of equity, uh, because of the, the increase in market value of the homes. And so you, if you're lucky, you got in at the three, the two and a half to 3% range. And so you're able to to pay off your principal a lot more than someone who just got in at eight percent, seven percent, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So that 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 feeds into the first time home buyer not qualifying because they don't have a large down payment. They 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 don't have an asset to sell to apply a large portion of that or some portion of that towards a down payment. And so that's what's uh, really really impacting that. Um, but the great thing about it is, uh, is that the the younger generation, you know, the the late twenties to mid thirties, who's established in the career, who has uh, who have a, a great paying job or you know a decent paying job, they're able to qualify, and so those are the ones that's really um, really able to to afford a mortgage at this point in time. Not sure what that is. <laughs> yeah, uh, but if we if we take a look at this week's numbers uh, for Clark County real estate, there's there's really a tell of two two sets of numbers. Um, Bill, can you bring that up, please? Sure. I, we have the technology. We have the technology. 
There's okay. really two sets of numbers because um, the the uh, note of market price uh, reduction, price change, I should say, the pending, um, they're all decent numbers. But if you look at the uh, at the solds, getting pretty thin. Getting yeah. pretty thin. Only 95, or I'm sorry, 97 this past week with 59 of those being under 30 days. But the thing I want to bring your attention to is look at the difference in from, from this previous week to this week with the the uh, average list price and average sold price. That's quite a substantial jump. But we see your note here that you put in yeah. there. Yeah, so I, I read two reports. I did the one as, as it is. Because if you remember a few weeks ago, um, there was there was one outlier that was five million dollars that sold, and it really really terribly skewed the numbers. Yes, and so that's what the what the uh, the week with the asterisk uh, looks like about five six weeks ago. That one really really skewed the number, but it was only one outlier. This week, we had seventeen properties. Value that that sold a million dollars or above. So that's that's more than an outlier when you only have uh, ninety seven transactions that that were completed last week. And so I I put the numbers down as as it was reported, but then I also figured out the numbers. Um, you know, I, I took out those seventeen. And and uh, figured out the other stuff. So uh, to me, that's a, a a better reflection of the market because there's not too many people in Clark County that can afford a million dollar home, unless his name is Mike Elrith. But that's a different topic for a different day. Well, so, fewer fewer and fewer every day. I think is the issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if we look at it without those seventeen, then the days on market average was thirty two. The um, the average list price was five hundred sixty-four thousand nine hundred seventy-six, with a two hundred and eighty-three dollar per square foot uh, listing average, and then the average sold was five hundred uh, five hundred sixty-one thousand six hundred eighty-seven dollars, with a uh, two hundred eighty-two dollars per square foot listing, and the average um, <laughs> average square footage. Of that second group being uh, one thousand nine hundred ninety four. So to me, that's a that's a better reflection of of where the market is as opposed to those those seventeen that really pushed the market up. Because um, there there may come a day that we have an average list price of seven hundred thousand plus, and an average sold price of seven hundred thousand plus. I just don't think that day is today. So um, that's really all um, we got to we got to come to when I say we I'm pointing at myself. We got to come to the realization that the market may be uh, changing. Um, but again, I don't know if it's seasonal. I don't know if it's interest rates. I don't know if it's uh, the, the political concerns that's going on. Uh, you know, there's so many myriad of things that, that could imp impact the market. So I just think that it's important that we keep monitoring the market and and making sure that uh, we're on top of things and and reporting things as as we become aware. Yeah, very interesting. Um, be nice. Well, it's all going to come down to what the next Fed meeting and what yeah. uh, Jerome Powell is going to do to us. <laughs> yeah, I I think if. If I think we'll we'll adjust to the higher interest rates as long as they stay at this level. If it keeps ticking upwards, then then we could be in trouble. Um. Yeah. I mean, I saw. You know, we're basically back to the average interest rates. You know, over the past 30, 40 years. So it's kind of disconcerting to see so much angst over, you know, what's typical as opposed to what was you know, a total outlier that we had for, for a number of years. Um, it's kind of like if, if the, if, if, if the economy can't adjust to the base case, 
then it's an extremely fragile economy. Uh, and there's an awful lot of pain to be had. Um, but as we've seen before in the past, I mean, unquestioned business assumptions are the most dangerous thing in America out there. Right. Uh, and maybe that's what we're seeing. You know, we certainly saw it in 2008 where, you know, real estate will never go down all over the U.S., you know, diversification. So, you know, it's become become more of a fragile kind of financial system. Yeah. So what uh, may I ask a question of you two, uh, you financial gurus, uh, which directions are you inclined to to? focus on in terms of investing um is there any stocks like perhaps defense stocks well you know there's the old saying that when the when uh, the tide goes out you know you can see who's swimming naked um so yeah i mean but there, there's in a, in a bad market there really is no safe haven it's just a matter of finding things you know if you must be invested the things that are less bad um you know, you would you would think that under the, under this kind of situation, utilities would be would be holding up uh, better, uh, like the XLU. Uh, but you know, it, it it's it's below its two hundred day um, consumer discretionary. You know, you'd think would be holding up. You know, food. Um, so, like a you know Procter and Gamble PG and E, it it's sitting on its two hundred day right now. Um, you know, so there's really not a good spot. Um, you could argue, you know, maybe Microsoft, uh, you know, it's it's above its 50 day, um, but that's what they've been referring to as the magnificent seven, you know, the, the, the biggest, you know, like the Microsofts, the Netflix, Google, Facebook. But when those guys crack, they crack hard, you know, and the rest of the market goes down with them. Um, so, and, but having said that, I mean, this is seasonally the best time of the year. Um, we just we just haven't seen it yet. Um, if you remember back in 2018, you know, Powell, that was his first attempt at raising interest rates. And in the, in the, you had the uh, the um, the tamper, the, the taper tantrum, as it was referred to when he first started, you know, pulling back on um, some of the excesses left over from 2008. Um, so, you know, we could we could conceivably still see a Santa Claus rally. Um, but, you know, believe it when I see it, <laughs> it's, it's not a requirement. It's not a graduation requirement for the market. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it, is, it isn't. Hey, you might want to, we might want to take a look at um, alcohol and ammunition. Um, yeah. Well, I was actually looking at, uh, well, like Ruger um, firearms, you know, that's actually looking pretty good. You know, that's above it, popping above its 200 day. Um, Smith and Wesson, which is kind of. Um, I think you got Constellation Brands and uh, Brown yeah. in the uh, distribution of alcohol business. Right. Brown, uh, Brown and Brown or Brown Foreman, I guess. Uh, you know, it, it, it's still looking kind of down. Uh, Constellation, STZ. Yeah, that's below its 200 day. So it's just a yeah, matter. Yeah. The thing is, like, and and part of the answer to Michael's question is, we always have to be forward looking. What's going to be uh, more likely to have um, a gain in in uh, uh, net income uh, in the future? Yeah, and well, uh, you know, those yeah, are the yeah. ones that should be going up in value. Yeah, well, I mean, the key thing you look at is relative strength, you know, compared to the market, and I I run scans pretty pretty regularly you know to see what it, it's not a matter of what stocks are investable right now but it's what's once the market turns you know what stocks are going to be the ones that you're going to want to get into um the stocks that have been holding up have the best relative strength even if you can't necessarily buy them now are the ones you're going to want to get back into and i sent you a, a couple sentences this morning bill um we need to keep an eye on what Congress is doing about infrastructure spending bills. Um, you know, like what's happened in the past when the economy is struggling and the government throws a bunch of money into uh, what you call public programs that, and especially 
um, infrastructure um, rebuilding. Um, you know, there's if these um, if if the money gets sent out over the country to uh, improve infrastructure, uh, the construction industry uh, could be uh, have a gold star uh, next to it, their names. Um, yeah, and some of those are probably going to do okay. Um, you know, it's kind of ironic though. You know, infrastructure because solar power has had such a strong, you know, push uh, in in the Biden build back better thing. And the stocks are getting creamed, especially today, like Enphase is off 14%. Um, Sunrun, you know, is off pretty hard in sympathy. It was down, it's down 6.8, 6.9. .9. Um, so, yeah. you know, infrastructure may sound great, but you gotta be like anything, you gotta be very selective, you know, where the, where the market, where the government right. is shoving the money. Absolutely. And so, so I, the ones that'll um, th that I'm interested in are uh, bridge builders, highway construction, the real, you know, the stuff that we have to have, uh, you know, the uh, airport uh, um, restructuring contractors, um, the things that were that we we use on a regular basis that have been falling apart, and um, n you know need to be maintained. Yeah. So there's engineering, engineering and materials and equipment, heavy so would equipment. You, would you would you look at Caterpillar and other large equipment companies like that? And, well, and, and Caterpillar keep an eye on infrastructure. Well, maybe, but you know, Caterpillar oh. tends to be more of a play on emerging markets, and it's actually yeah, had Caterpillar's uh, so worldwide. Yeah, it's had a hard week. Uh, what's it down? It's down almost, uh, it's down 7% on the week. Um, so yeah, some of the others like Sterling, Sterling infrastructure, STRO, um, you know, it's down today, but it, you know, it's actually holding up pretty well compared to the rest of the market. Um, you know, CX, you could argue Semex, uh, is actually holding up pretty well. Even though it's had a, you know, peaked around eight, it's around five ninety eight right now. But so those are, okay. What are your take on on uh, precious metals as as the economy kind of, you know, teeters on? on um, yeah, they've started. I mean, gold has had a nice week actually. Um, like the GLD, up two point six seven. Um, silver is up uh, 2.94. Uh, so some of those are starting to do okay. Um, what's, yeah, dollar, dollar's bullish also. So it's kind of like precious metals, um, gasoline, <laughs> it's doing well. You know, commodities are doing okay. Um, Yeah, so commodity related stuff is doing pretty well right now. So holding up, but that can yeah. reverse on you also pretty hard. Yeah. So are the uh, AI uh, stocks still performing well, or have they taken a hit as also? Uh, they're they're getting hit, you know, with software. Um, Palantir was doing okay. Uh, it's so it's, it's actually right there between the 10 and the 21 day uh but it's off 5.6 today but everything is um you know it's kind of, that's kind of emerged as the premier um microsoft is you know a good one google's another one that's been holding up okay um so the big caps are kind of doing well yeah what do you think there'll be uh many acquisitions or mergers or things like that because things are kind of on a downswing oh sure yeah you always see merger and acquisition activity take off the guys that have the cash you know are, are buying growth um then certainly in the tech in the tech sector you know some of these companies are now the, the walking dead um you know since as we saw with uh, um silicon valley bank 
you know, they, they, they had a lot of cash, but you know, they didn't have a lot of runway. So I'm sure there's, there's, there's a lot of dancing going on right now with those, where the companies that have the cash will acquire the small companies, you know, probably at, you know, much lower valuation than even a year ago. Yeah, the the company I always hear that has a lot of cash, other than Berkshire or Hathaway, um, is Microsoft. They 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 hoard cash, they hoard cash, and they have, you know, a hundred billion dollars in the in the in their coffer waiting to find something to buy. But they don't buy like like Warren Buffett buys or Berkshire or Hathaway. They buy uh, companies, you know, like uh, are they investing like Chat GPT? I uh, they were a large investor in that. Yeah, they were a big investor through, um, and they're well through um, their um, their cloud service. They also they they own a lot of it, and they they comp them a lot of it. Um, Ac- the Activision ac- acquisition in the gaming space is a big one for Microsoft. Yeah. So all those companies that have money, Google, you know, all those guys have been minting cash. Apple, big time acquisition. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what what uh, comes about of this whole, um, you know, because like you started off with uh, today, Bill, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. Um, the Middle East, the dollar, the, the interest rates, the uncertainty with the political, you know, future of the company, because, you know, we don't have a speaker, so we, we can't really enact any any new policies without a a, a speaker. Well... That's not necessarily bad, <laughs> but, right. but we do have the uh, continuing resolution or, you know, the funding uh, for the U.S. government that was put off by 45 days. And I think we got about 20 days left. Uh, so that, that kind of concentrates the mind. Yeah. A lot of lot of a uh, lot of things up in the air right now. Uh, yeah, but it's, you know, the. the Time to is I'm not sure you said it, but the time to buy is when the blood's running in the streets. Uh, so, like, like I said, you got to preserve your cash so you're not you have stuff to work with when it finally does turn. But you also got to keep looking to know what to, to invest. You know how to how to get back in relatively quickly. Yeah. That market just closed, and uh, where did we end up on the uh, S and P? It was looking pretty pretty grim there at the end. Yeah, yeah, one 1.27%. So it was definitely definitely down some. I think we're below the 200 day, which is nothing good happens. You're saying is nothing good happens below the 200 day moving average. So we'll see what the we'll see what Monday brings if we get a bounce. If we don't yeah. get a bounce, then keep building cash. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, stop recording.